In the dark desert of Jordan, archaeologists endured quite a long while researching a site called Shudo Puncher One. Why? Because experts were of the opinion that the people who lived there in the past might be able to tell us more about one of the greatest inventions ever invented. As a result, the researchers discovered the ashes of an ancient meal in the ruins of a fireplace. The contents of the meal may challenge conventional notions regarding the growth of agriculture. The earliest humans were known to hunt and gather. Naturally, our ancestors would then hunt for food and forage for edible plants. However, because the availability of food changed with the seasons, people would have to migrate to find new food sources. In fact, this way of life has existed for the majority of human history. Therefore, agriculture and its associated sedentary lifestyle are relatively recent innovations. Yet there are as yet a couple of agrarian social orders in presence. These include the beauty of Central Africa, the copper Inuit in the Arctic, and the sand in the southern part of Africa. This could be due to the fact that the areas in which these people live are not ideal for cultivating crops or keeping animals. As a result, their lives have been studied to learn more about how ancient hunter-gatherer societies might have been. Of course, every hunter-gatherer community is unique, but they all share some characteristics in common. For instance, the majority of them are quite small, with only a few dozen members, and the labor in hunter-gatherer societies is frequently divided. Except for age and gender, Women are in charge of foraging, and men are typically in charge of hunting. However, there appears to be little distinction between the positions and roles played by members of these communities. However, the transition from hunting and gathering to settled farming and human agriculture was probably gradual. In point of fact, it appears that a number of distinct societies around the world began cultivating crops independently of one another. For instance, the Indus Valley of northern India's great civilizations, Egypt, Sumer, and Mesopotamia, had sophisticated agricultural practices. Additionally, the evidence suggests that some of our earliest attempts at agriculture were made after the end of the Pleistocene Ice Age. That would have been about a long time back. The end of this year saw a significant shift in the climate, which had an effect on ecosystems all over the world. As a result, the people of the time may have been managing non-domesticated animals and plants in an early form of farming. After all, living by hunting and gathering was hard and growing their own food may have given early farmers peace of mind that they wouldn't starve during the dry seasons. If you knew how to manipulate the crop, ground-baked food could provide more energy than a raw plant, and farmed cows and sheep could provide milk and meat that could not be guaranteed from wild animals. Plants are thought to have been domesticated for the first time around 12,000 years ago, and animals were tamed about 2,000 years later, between 80,10 and 1,000 years ago. However, people in East Asia and the Americas also started growing various crops. For example, wheat and barley were popular in Southwest Asia, rice was popular in East Asia, and squash was popular in the countries that are now Mexico and Peru. When people from hunter-gatherer cultures moved to a single location, they built homes that could last for a long time. Southwest Asia saw an increase in population as a result. In fact, around 10,000 years ago, Farming communities were established in what is now known as the Fertile Crescent. The Shoe Baker One is the first Natufian site outside of the core zone that has been thoroughly investigated by archaeologists. Despite the fact that the hunter-gatherer culture was primarily based in the Mediterranean woodlands, Shoe Baker One is in the Black Desert, an area of eastern Georgia, and it appears to be a treasure trove of new information about the food habits of hunters and gatherers. The black bass old stones that make up a lot of the landscape in this area are what give it its name. It is also close to the border with Syria, about 82 miles from Ammon, the capital of Jordan. The Baker area is just one of several archaeologically significant locations on the site. For example, Jebel Kerma is a location in the Black Desert. Because of the artwork that can be found on nearby rocks, this area has received a lot of research. In fact, the inscriptions from 2,000 years ago suggest that the desert was not always dry and unhospitable. Even the possibility that there was once a substantial population exists. However, Chu Baker 1 seems to demonstrate that the 2000s were in the area much earlier than the art here. It's maybe significant that the Dark Desert is really a volcanic field. This field additionally ranges portions of Syria, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan, making it the biggest volcanic field in Arabia. In point of fact, the area covers more than 19,000 square miles. It is the source of the local Bass Altar rock that forms lava flows. Although farming did not become widespread in the area until 4,000 years after the two Finns lived at Chewbacca, it appears that their lifestyle was more sedentary than that of the cultures that came before them. Additionally, this had a significant impact on their diet, 
as the excavations at Shoe Baker demonstrate. Despite the fact that the location itself was first discovered in the 1990s, these excavations took place at Shoe Baker 1 from 2012 to 2015. The work was led by archaeologists from the University of Copenhagen, with assistance from Jordan's Antiquities Department. Although there were probably multiple buildings at HSU Baker 1 in the past, the researchers concentrated on the two that were best preserved. Other experts from the University of Cambridge and UCL were also involved. Tools and animal bones were found inside the buildings, suggesting that they were built of the basil, a common type of stone in the region. A human skeleton was found in one wall to the group found that the structures had additionally had their own chimneys. Similar as the structures to these three-foot-wide chimneys had been shaped with basalt stones. In addition, the Natufian era structures were confirmed by radiocarbon dating of the ashes inside. However, instead of clearing the chimneys out then the two fields had apparently quite recently left them as they were. As a result, the researchers were able to examine the ashes to determine what the Natufian people had been preparing and eating. Fortunately, Baker 1 was probably a wetland during the time of the Natufian shoe. Even though the arid conditions of today make it difficult to grow crops here, it would have been different in the past. Some produce, like wheat, had already grown naturally in the area. However, archaeologists have long held the belief that the Natufian people lived thousands of years before agriculture began in Southwest Asia. That is the thing makes what was found at HSU Bread cook one so exceptional. Specifically, researchers collected 49 samples from the fireplaces for subsequent microscopy analysis. In addition, the findings revealed that despite not being cultivated by farmers, the two fields had developed all of the processes required to make their own bread. Sounds like Hap before she could even begin. The research student had to establish criteria to distinguish bread from other ancient cereals like porridge. Caratero was able to see the tiny structures and particles contained within the remains using microscopy to accomplish this. She could then compare the samples to the experimental bread made for the study. Basically, all that is needed to make bread is flour and water, as you can see. After that, dry heat is typically used to bake this mixture. It's really the consideration of gluten or other protein in the flour that gives bread its shape and surface. Then bread provides a variety of nutrients, including iron, magnesium, and B vitamins, as part of a human diet. The staple is likewise a decent wellspring of sugars and fiber. Bread would have consequently been a decent way for tracker finders to compensate for the absence of calories in the crude plants that they had consumed. In any case, Caratera needed to determine whether the shoe bagel one samples met her definition of bread. Microscopy revealed that the ashes contained a mixture of anchor and wheat, oats, barley, and club rush tubers, all of which met Caratero's criteria. This indicates that the plant matter would probably have been ground together to produce a fine flour of surprising high quality. Additionally, there would have been no yeast or other kind of raising agent used to make the bread. As a result, it probably resembled a modern pita in appearance and form. According to M. Aaron Xrip, a botanical expert who also co-authored the subsequent July 2018 study, the club rush tubers were the plant that appeared most frequently in the fireplaces. The tubers on their own preferences somewhat sweet and a piece pungent, and had a coarse surface, however not any contended that might have been because of the researchers not cleaning them appropriately. However, since the club rush tubers would have produced a crumbly bread on their own, the two fins would have been able to bake the bread more easily if they had added wheat, which would have provided the gluten necessary to alter the dough's texture. At HSU Baker 1, however, there was no evidence of ovens, so the bread probably was baked on a hot stone near the fire or in the ashes themselves. One possible reason why flat breads were so popular in the ancient world is that they could be baked without using an oven. Another possibility is that they were easy to stack, making transportation and storage simple. Historical unleavened flatbreads have also been discovered in the past. There are really Roman, and surprisingly, Neolithic destinations in both Europe and Turkey that have uncovered comparable remaining parts. However, the oldest of these was 9100 years old. The bread in Jordan go back a long way, so the archaeologists weren't too surprised when they found them. All things considered, past investigations of Natufian destinations have uncovered old crushing apparatuses and sickle cutting edges made of rock. These pointed to the possibility that the Natufian had been tinkering with and interacting with plants. Thus, the researchers and Danella now have evidence to back up their theories. Pasco alone, a food technologist not associated with the review appear to concur with the study's discoveries. While bread has been the focus of several studies that Pascal has authored, she stated that flat breads may have been an ideal means of bridging the gap between stable farmers and hunter-gatherers due to their advantages over other types of bread. 
Pascal is the only individual who was an expert in the science behind cereals. Patrick McGovern, who works at the University of Pennsylvania's Biomolecular Archaeology Laboratory for Cuisine, Fermented Beverages, and Health, offered a different point of view. Significant services in Christianity, and it includes eating a slice of bread along with drinking a taste of wine. As a part of the ceremony, the wine addresses the blood of Jesus Christ, while the bread addresses the body. Bread and wine are included in the Last Supper elsewhere, and the Jewish holiday of Passover actually commemorates the alleged rescue of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt by God. In point of fact, Jews observe Passover as one of their holiest festivals even today. They accomplish this by eating matzo, a type of unleavened bread. So assuming that bread was sufficiently significant to the Natufian, they might have even been roused to begin developing their own grains. Therefore, it's possible that the Nato wanted to increase bread production, which is why agriculture was started. So exploring whether the creation of bread was a consider individuals starting to develop grains is one of the following names of the scientists. The team has, however, presented their findings in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences for the time being. The experts want to further investigate early plant and animal consumption in light of their most recent discoveries, and the Danish Council for Independent Research has awarded additional funding to continue the research. This includes determining which plants were most suitable for bread making and whether they were the ones that farmers would eventually cultivate. Donachy likewise needs to reproduce the Natufian bread. Making flour from club rush tubers was the first step in this direction, but the results didn't seem to appeal to modern palates. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like it, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, you'll be the first to know when I upload something new.